I thought uh, I'd take another look at the Ejing sequencer, which I made in Flash, and Flash, by the end of this year, is not supported by Chrome and probably Firefox. And there's probably some ways to convert this to other formats or to rewrite it, but it's you know, it was something I was interested in, did, it was a good project. It's done, and um, I'm sure there's, there'll always be some way to play flashes, but not uh, to deliver on the net. So, um, I did one of these before, just kind of showing the basics of it, um, and this is going to be much the same. But what this is, uh, is a way to display several different systems of organizing the 64 I Ching hexagrams. The I Ching is a, uh, an ancient Chinese um, method of divination, and uh, it's like you know you've heard of casting lots, uh, you know, it's tossing coins. Um, but through this are cracks in a tortoise shell, which is really like the ancient, most ancient way. Tea leaf reading. I mean, these ways of divination of you know looking at your situation, looking at the future. And the I Ching is based on um, a system of what they call, first of all, trigrams, um, which are three lines. So they could, a line can be either solid or broken. And then a hexagram, which is composed of two trigrams. So each of the trigrams has a, um, a certain sort of a symbolism. And uh, then the mixing of these uh, basically give a constellation of possibilities so that if you let's say throw the coins and arrive at a particular hexagram which would be two trigrams and the trigrams having their properties then something could be derived like from that much like a tarot card or many other systems so that's the explanation kind of the short version of the I Ching but what this thing does the sequencer is it um, allows one to go frame by frame to look at the relationships between the different systems of, of organizing the 64 uh, hexagrams. That's the total number of possibilities uh, with the six lines being either broken or solid. And the idea of that is a solid line is yang and a broken line is yin. And uh, of course it's a whole uh, you know, huge philosophy uh, It's very interesting. And this, again, is a tool uh, by which one can see some of these relationships. So I'm going to go through the, the parts of this, and this is kind of for a historical record. Because like I said, once Flash is disabled, it's uh, probably you won't be able to see it anymore. So here we have uh, at the top each Ching sequencer version 2.2. Okay, and from the left, um, I'm looking at the mystery sequence, the natural order and what that is, is um, from Wilhelm Bain's uh, translation and scholarly work of the I Ching. And they have, so the sequence would be the very first one, which we see here, um, all solid lines, uh, they would say that was number one. And if we look below that, we see the King One parallel. King One was another arrangement of these and it coincides and agrees with that. The eight palaces sequence, which is below this, also agrees with that. And below that you see the king one parallel. So as we go through these, in fact, the, the parallel for the eight palaces sequence and the parallel for the mystery sequence are not the same as we go through, through it. I choose as my favorite the mystery sequence, which is why it's in the center. I think it is the most natural and beautiful uh, arrangement of the lines. Now we'll go to the right over here and we see the King One's uh, sequence in a blue line going down to a box that's showing uh, the hexagram with a uh, romanization using the ancient weight dial system, uh, the Chinese character for that hexagram, and a uh, translation of of the Chinese, uh, in this case Chen, for one. 
Now, going up above this, the Fushi King 1 parallel, uh, there is another system of numbering, and it's saying that where all these are agreeing it's one, in this particular uh, grouping or uh, sequence arrangement, uh, it's two. And also, it's interesting to note that it corresponds to all broken lines, which be, you know, total in uh, as uh, compared to one, which is total yang. Also, <coughs> there is a relationship between binary numbers and also DNA nucleotides. Um, so I've added those as well. Now, let's just go through this a little bit. I'm going to go to the next one. The next, there's 64, and incidentally, the little, uh, you know, the tickers on the left there with the numbers 8 through 64 will just follow alone to give you some idea of where we are within the sequence. So we'll go to the next. Okay, now a lot of things have changed. And so we see that we're on the mystery sequence uh, number 2, which corresponds with King 1's parallel 44, and so forth. So it's like that. And the mystery sequence in this, uh, the, the far right box, where you see Kuhn number 2, the receptive, um, that agrees with with Wilhelm's mystery sequence. So let's go to the next one. We see three. And I'm going to just kind of click through these to get to something else I'm going to show. Now notice as I click through these, you will see in the uh, the lines a kind of pattern that will start emerging, um, which is really something to note and why I designed this. So let's just go through this. I'm going to just kind of click through. And that's the 64th, which you can see in the Wilhelm sequence, it's all broken lines. So it goes, the Wilhelm sequence goes from all solid to the end, which is all broken. And uh, there's a lot of other interesting features about it. And notice the other, um, you know, sequences, how different they are. No not notable is the <clears throat> on the right, we see the Fushi King 1 parallel, and it's at number 1, which is the exact opposite of the Wilhelm. Now, what all this means and these relationships and stuff, I don't know for sure, but they're interesting to me. I studied the Jing for many, many years, and rolled it many, many years, did the Yarrow stocks, um, and I found a, a lot of value in it. There's a lot of stuff there that's worthy of, of, of uh, one's time. So now I'm going to show you with the cool thing that I really built this for, which is to through a uh, to turn on like an animation of this, which helps to see. And I'm just going to let it roll for a few rounds, and then I'm also going. To, I added a soundtrack to this thing, which is ridiculous, but I'll play that after a few rounds, and that'll be the end of this demonstration of the Eijing sequencer version 2.2. So here we go. The animate. Well, first we'll rewind it to the first. Hexagram, and here we go. Okay, now for I'm going to kick on the soundtrack which is down here in the lower left. I'm going to click on that speaker and uh, it's pretty raucous so you might want to turn your headphones down or your speakers. Here we go. One, two, three. And there you have it, 
Um, if you uh, watched this and found it interesting, uh, that would be great. Also on this, I had put a little uh, explanation link, which is this. And I'm going to read it very quick, quickly. Why not? I mean, I'm recording this, I hope. <laughs> and it says the Yijing sequencer is the result of working with the Yijing solely at the single hexagram level and finding the need for a new perspective on the hexagrams as a whole. A brief introduction to the Yijing will likely include some mention of its relationship to change and cycles. It is also generally known that the Yijing consists of 64 hexagrams, ideograms formed of six broken or solid lines each, and that these <coughs> represent all the possible manifestations of change. Studying the hexagrams is usually a slow meditative process. In consulting the oracle, one either casts yarrow stocks or more commonly coins to derive a hexagram. Once the hexagram has been established, a reading of the commentaries and various texts, wings associated with this hexagram is undertaken. There may be changing lines in the hexagram, in which case additional related hexagrams are derived. We can use the metaphor of time-lapse photography to explain the basic purpose and function of the Yijing sequencer. If one were to sit and watch a sunflower throughout the course of one day, it would be impossible to actually see the movement although during the one-day cycle periodic recognition of movement would occur to the viewer. If a time-lapse movie of the same sunflower were made by condensing one day into one minute, we could see the magic of heliotropic plants, those which follow the sun. By compressing and animating a series of changing pictures, we can gain a new view of the otherwise non-linear sequence. The aging sequencer can therefore be thought of as a time-lapse movies or of historical and significant Heijing sequences. Uh, that was written back in 2006, maybe. <laughs> so there it is, a um, little piece for the archives out there on the internet.